Yeah. Hello, welcome to this week's vlog. Hello, welcome to this week's vlog. And if you're wondering why I'm doing the intro, you're about to find out. we did was a cage set up and little Stanley's been growing he's weaning a lot more as well he's only having about 10 to 20 mils of milk a day now come out with Sam and he's even went to a school in where was it, Southampton and we did a talk on the new forest animals he just bit me then <laughs> <laughs> and Stanley came along and met loads of children he was a bit nervous at first, but he just likes to hide in my pocket. And then, he even let someone stroke his tail. So he's doing really well. Still tame. Don't want to jinx that though. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. <laughs> Hello, I'm Carl. Um, I've been the person with the voice in the breeding um, room. You've probably seen me with um, I got up before, I've done an intro about the um, Gerfalcon last year. 
and I actually do breeding falcons here. So what I'm freezing this year is Jer peregrines and peregrines. And I've been given a like, slight little sort of like update week on week to how it all starts and the age of the chicks now. Um, obviously we can't take it into too much detail. I'm just going to give you a little idea of what, we, what I do and the incubation. It's all artificial insemination. All the eggs are taken to a safe place and the falcons are given dummy eggs to sip so they're still broody. And when the chicks are hatched and they get stronger each day, which I'll decide and keep an eye on, fed really, really well, they'll come back to the mums. And I've got some really, really good mums and they'll accept the chicks and I'll just swap the eggs and then mums will take over because I want the birth parent reared. So I'm going to give you a little tour of the breeding, breeding room and um, show you step by step how the process is done. Obviously not going to go into all the details and show you everything but this gives you a little idea there's a lot and a lot of work goes into it whether you're a big breeder or a small breeder like myself and I um, hope you enjoy it. Just going to give um, you a short little tour, a little video of my breeding room and each step as we go. Um, obviously the eggs will come from the falcons which I will collect and bring back here and put them in to the contact incubator which you can see has got more reflection but more it's more like an airbag which goes down and heats up the egg from above as if it's like sitting on the, mo the mother sitting on it uh, and that will be in there for 10 days and then after 10 days they will go into the groom back forced air incubator and we'll have egg trays for smaller smaller eggs because they do tend to roll around a little bit so just a few eggs left in there in that tray uh, on the bottom just my preference we've got some bigger eggs which will go and they'll stay on the rollers and they are turned three times a day to stop the, the developing embryo sticking and it also helps when they do hatch in the right, in the right position and um, on the bottom there you might see is another egg which is which is drawn down which means the air sex draw, drawn down and then we're, we're just waiting for it to pip so there's a little crack be a little crack in the egg and that's when the chick starts breathing our oxygen and also it's very important when you do turn them close again just to waft a little bit of a bit of fresh air so I need to breathe so a little bit of fresh, fresh air will go into that one and then once they are pipped and we'll bring them into what is the hatcher and um, there is a, an egg in there which has pipped already it's got a little crack in it so that egg can actually breathe in our air I don't know if you can see the crack there but there's definitely a crack in there so that going there and that hatch out into in, in there uh, it normally takes between 50 and 70 hours from pip to hatch this is a massive transition from being in cocooned in an egg, then all of a sudden breathing oxygen, and they need to rest and eventually cut out, which takes about 20 minutes. And the camera is obviously on there, so I know any any motion, any any noise, I can pick it up. If I happen to be somewhere else, I can watch it. I do like to make sure they cut out nicely, and sometimes I do help need a little bit of help getting out. Also, with the egg, when I send it away, because I need to know the sex of the bird, I need to be able to get a little bit of the egg into just trying to grab a little jiffy bag, and it needs to be dry. But obviously, if it's too dry and it's stuck to the egg, it's hard to get some out because you need to be able to send some of the inner layer with membrane and a little bit of blood which will get sent away to a company who can determine from that what sex the bird's going to be. So it's important, it's quite important for me to actually watch when the egg is being hatched and I can actually remove 
while it's still wet some of the inner egg, the membrane, the veins or whatever you want to call it then let it dry out, put it in a bag and send it off away send it away to get it um, DNA to an upsex verter the next stage after that will be into a brooder again basically just a little ICU a little unit which is forced air and it keeps the bird very very warm obviously and also keeps it away from infection and that will be the result the little chick comes out of there again it's all uh, marked um, I know who the mum is I'll put a little marker on there so I know which chick from which parent and obviously when they get a bit older I will colour their heads when I put them back because they will all go back when they're strong and fit back to their parents and they will be parent reared by a proper parent, by a real peregrine. So I'll just bring them here and I'll look after them. They're all, they're all sitting dummy eggs, they're all broody still. You can't not let, you can't just uh, leave, take all the eggs away and give them nothing. I'll put dummy eggs back, which I always have some dummy eggs. Got some rubber eggs or chicken eggs you can use. Some birds take to anything, some birds are a bit fussy, but they all, they're all sitting eggs. So when you do find your chicks nice and strong and ready to go back, you can just do a quick swap. So we'll swap the eggs, replace them with chicks and obviously because the mum's been sitting the eggs all the time they're still very very broody and um, they'll take to the chicks like they're their own, no problem at all there. I will watch for a little while and make sure just look, they brood them and feed them, that's the most important part and um, just monitor them and the chicks will be fine and grow and mum will just pair and rear them as normal. So thanks very much for watching my little intro to breeding programme. So a minute ago, Joe was filming with a TV crew, looking gorgeous. A Harold Bufontaine up for the day, and she's got to film again later on. Look at the state. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> flash flooding. <laughs> Our guests are hiding in the uh, lodge. We're, I'm here with Sam today. <laughs> Sam's hiding. <laughs> Sam's on an experience day. No, you're not. You're on a fuggery course, aren't you? Because we were talking yes. about you in the last vlog. So. <laughs> A lot of theory today. A lot of theory. <laughs> Maybe yeah. more. <laughs> Maybe really more. The way this went. Yeah. <laughs> and George has just turned up at the opportune moment <laughs> in good <Yeah>. footwear. <laughs> <laughs> so we're hiding in the weighing room. Jackie and our guests are in the lodge. And to be honest, we're seriously hoping this does one. Because thunder and lightning that makes you jump out your skin isn't something we've had for a while. Only in the UK. Rain for two minutes. Hail, torrential rain. Arrived. My axolotls that grown in this pond from half inch babies to sort of six or eight inch adults all vanished. Don't know what's eating them. It's not really somewhere a heron comes in, and most of them would be difficult for a heron to see. Don't know what went on there. Not very happy. So we're going to put some three spine sticklebacks, native fish. And I'm hoping, the pond stays really clear, certainly when these petals have stopped falling in. I'm hoping people are going to get to see these sticklebacks, as I did as a child. Breeding, the male's beautiful blue eyes, dark red throats, one of the most beautiful British fish, without a doubt, a breeding male three-spine stickleback. The nine-spine stickleback, the males have a black throat, and they live in the much lower to the bottom on the sediments, and very hard, much... Very few people have seen a nine spine stickleback compared to my childhood seeing these amazing three spine sticklebacks. They were everywhere in Northamptonshire, every canal, ditch, stream, pond, lake. They were the tiddler. Not so anymore, not so anymore. So hopefully they're gonna breed in the pond. I'm gonna actually put a signboard up if they survive and thrive. And older people can reminisce. Younger people can find out what a stickleback actually is. I'm gonna let them go. Been here before. The guy's been here before in he the Sparky Land Rover, hasn't he? Yeah, there was a guy who said he's been there about five years ago. Oh, no, nice? he was here last year, the one that, you know, the black no, and white Land Rover. He never even used to let me near him, let alone kiss him and stroke him when he was eating. <laughs> it's all down my sleeve, Stan. Sharing it. Isn't it typical that the thing he likes best happened to be a, a bit of junk food? Oh, it's all going down my sleeve.
Are you finished? He's had enough. Bee bombs that we planted last year. We didn't plant them really, did we? We prepared the soil and scattered the seeds. But have a look. One of my favourite all time um, countryside plants is Red Campion. Various forget me nots. Uh, we've got oxide daisies coming along. Where are you, oxide daisies? I've just looked at you. Ah, oh, yes, here you are. Not flowering yet, of course, it's too early for them. But I am going to get in there and thin out some nettles. Now, I don't mind nettles in somewhere like this because the herbage as a whole supports each other. If you just plant a tall plant in your garden in a border and you weed your border and the border's not thick. Obviously, when it rains, everything just gets flattened and, and it looks horrible. And then you put stakes in and bits of wire and it just doesn't look very natural at all. But the nettles need thinning out because they're overshadowing some of the good stuff that I want to see more than I do nettles. So I'm going to get in there by hand soon. But for now, look at that foxglove. Ready to go, coming up, ready to flower. I'm quite pleased. It's nice to see. It's been tough. It's been a drought all last year. And these, some of these little seedlings, they managed to sprout and they managed to survive. Again, there's no sun whatsoever, but it's looking nice in here. Not seeing much life now. Did have a few reptiles out and about in the sunshine, but for now, the little outdoor enclosure for the slow worms and common lizards and a few of the beasties is looking more natural, although of course, still got to put some plants around here. And I have some creeping jenny for that purpose over there. I have a little nursery there. That's earmarked for something else we're going to be doing. But Spring's going on, the countryside's growing and the flowers are flowering, but my goodness me, it is cold, it is wet. It's, well, the forecast is just demoralising to be honest. You can see even here in the woodland pond, we've got some aquatic plants now growing up through the, the blanket weed. It's getting enough sun to start growing. There's mosquito larvae in there, there's newts in there. And let's just hope there's more stuff in there than I know of. What I need to do is lamp the pond with the torch at night time, but I'm just not here when it's dark at the moment, just to see how many newts, or an idea of how many newts and what species are in there right now. Something for another day. Well, let me show you one more thing while we're on plants. Lords and ladies, coming up over here. Have a look at these. So these are a a woodland plant, a bottom of a hedgerow plant these days. Which, to be honest, looks like an incredibly tropical, weird and wonderful plant. You know, and it's a, a hedgerow plant nowadays, or a garden weed. It's crazy because they look great. Really tropical. If these were six foot tall, wow. But that's a job for the giant Arum, not for those guys there. Hi, we're back. Just gonna give you an update on these chicks. As you can see, they're growing really fast and all really, really hungry and doing extremely well. So we're going to um, give them a few more feeds and then tomorrow the two older ones, which is the one I'm feeding now on the end, that's the old one, six days old. This one here, I'm feeding this four days old. Um, the little one at the back, it's just two days old. That's going to stay with me for a little a few more days yet. Not quite ready to go back yet. Haven't got um, the DNA back, so I don't know what to, which are boys and which are girls yet. So that will be um, sorted out next week. So as you can see, they're all very, very hungry. They're all doing extremely well, which is very, very pleasing. All feeding nicely.
quite a handful as you can see. All get nice shared share equally. And what I like to do is um, when I put them back with the mums, we'll um, keep you updated on the progress as we go along. You won't believe how quick these little things can change. Actually, from day to day, they get bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. So there's just a little update, update for now. We'll um, keep you posted. Um, we'll check back in. So watch this space. Beautiful little things. See you later. I love these European eyed lizards. They're great characters and what I've found is if you've got them in a vivarium at kind of your height or waist to chest height, they're really sort of solid, tame things. They'll come and finger feed and even this guy, like real natural behaviors right at the front, digging its own tunnel right at the front on show. It's quite a busy environment where it does get us in and out past the vivarium quite often really chilled out. What I have found, unfortunately, low down, or even outside low down, they're quite skittish things, or ours are anyway, a bit more threatened like we're a predator, and tend to bolt as soon as they see you nearby. Definitely seem a lot happier up at our kind of level. And they're both real beauties. So as I've already mentioned, we've got uh, sort of 40 mil mesh on here. Uh, unfortunately, we've got a lot of jackdaws nesting about 30 feet away, and it is unfortunately the only way. I hate having mesh on ponds and things, but have a look through here. The big old boy out basking. Not seen these guys out much at all lately. And if you look to the left, you can see actually in the shade. focusing through there one of the common lizards and again not seen those for weeks so although the weather's been a bit cloudy the last couple of days the air temperature has been enough to bring out a lot of these guys even when the sun's not been on them just took in quite a lot of food so we supplement feeding as well as the natural food having mealworms wax worms and small crickets so there's always something in there and of course any slugs and worms we find go in there as well I can't see anyone else out but I'm sure there's others but looking good lovely to see them basking in the real sunshine yeah so these are from a normal problem milk snake a normal male and these are the normal male with the apricot 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 female just laid today so Set them in an egg box, see how they get on. There's a little slugger down there, but those are a bit strange shapes. They should be fine, and we'll definitely get apricots from there. 60 days of cooking now. Nighttime newt searching. There's one here. Here's another one.
Filthy dirty again. Oh, how does Friday come around so quick? So it's looking good. Jackie and I have been doing the lawns and the gardening, getting ready for the weekend opening again. Um, we did predict that if we decide to open um, during the summer on the weekends as a sort of a new, new thing really, we predicted it would be the wettest summer for many years. So everyone in the UK, it is actually our fault. I do apologise. Um, forecast looks a little bit dodgy for tomorrow. But to be honest, they don't really know what they're talking about, so we just play it by ear. So Jackie's been <laughs> picking up the hedge trimmings. She's been mowing the lawn. Um, the ride on mower has been good to us, and you know, there's a few of us that use it. Jackie's used it for the first time, and I've got to dismantle the nose cone because the frame's bent because it's run into something. But that person over there <laughs> denies all knowledge of such things. Um, I would say women drivers, but Georgia seems to manage just fine. <laughs> so, oh yes, I'll tell you what, we've got a bit of music on today. Now we can't play music with our guests here because apparently you need a music license, don't you? But I don't know if you can hear that. We're testing the PA systems, testing their battery life, running some music through them um, because, you know, hopefully roadmap permitting and all, we'll be doing some nice flying displays and other talks and things. Um, Weekend's coming soon. Let's see how things go. Uh, no tortoises out today. Hardly been out at all this week because it's cold, really, for May, middle of May. Um, there's no sunshine. You know, look how, if you love, live in Mediterranean regions, guys, have a look at that. Sucks, doesn't it? That's why you're smiling. Us English folk aren't as smiley because the sky's grey. And um, we were spoiled last summer. What else can I tell you? Oh, Zeus is having a usual natter over there. Um, uh, the flower meadow's coming up a little bit, despite the actual lack of sun for the plants to grow. And have a look at this. Thanks to Bob Wilson lending me his amazing sort of mechanical hoover mower thing, Billy Goat. Uh, you wouldn't believe it, but Jackie's ran over this and picked up all the petals that have fell off, and they just keep coming. So... Yep, when all those petals have fallen off, we can get this place looking tidy, which will seem to be forever. It's constantly scooping them out of the pond. Hopefully, those sticklebacks we put in earlier are still thriving and looking well. There's certainly plenty of natural food in there. Hopefully we'll have to film those soon, once this gets crystal clear again and the petals have stopped falling. Hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. Keep watching. We're well aware that we're only producing the vlog on, on the Sunday, and we're well aware we're not producing an interim video about snakes, falconry, nature, or anything. And that is purely because there's just way too much going on at the moment, and we are either asleep or we're working. Seriously, it never ends. It never ends. So bear with, there'll be more stuff coming soon. Hope you enjoyed the vlog please subscribe it helps us no end and it also gives us a lot of positivity and makes us want to push it forward and carry on for you guys so take care uh, oh hang on hang on what else can i tell you I had an interesting chat actually let's just skip back I had an interesting chat with a guy that phoned me he says he watches the vlogs and he loves them and he lives in london and he says he's just like feels this burning desire that he should be working with birds of prey and a falconer um, but just doesn't know how to access it, and which is really quite difficult. You know, he lives in a city environment. He says he's willing to give up everything and change his lifestyle completely to work with birds of prey. And it's really, really difficult. So I said I'd try and find someone in his area or the local club. But, you know, it does seem difficult. When I started falconry, there was no internet. I just thought it was a black art that was only for the certain people that managed to do it and never even entertained the idea. It was an absolute fluke that I managed to become involved with Birds of Prey. So I'm going to try and help this guy out. You know who you are. Um, there's nothing we can do personally, but there's certainly stuff I can do to try and point him in the right direction, help him find the support he needs. But for sure, if you want to do anything enough, and you're willing to make sacrifices. Now, sacrifices seem to be in our lifetime all about financial sacrifices, but you can make anything happen if you want it to, but you have to push yourself forward and try and try and try again. So let's hope this guy succeeds in what he wants to do, and we're certainly going to help him where we can. But for now, goodbye. See you soon.